October 15, 2005 is a day that I will never forget for as long as I live. It was the day that I competed in the Ironman World Championship Triathlon in Kailua, Kona, Hawaii. But more importantly, it was the day that Spirit spoke directly to me. I was running the marathon portion of the race, and I was at around the 24th mile mark. I was all by myself in the pitch dark on the Queen K Highway when Spirit spoke to me. The message that came in from Spirit was, You created this. You created all of this. I honestly can still hear that message in my head, as though it just happened a moment ago. It was a message that confirmed everything that happened that day was the result of my practice of creative visualization. The whole experience of racing that day was almost a perfect blueprint of what I had visualized, so much so that I seriously thought that I must be in heaven. And God was letting me do the race as it had been a dream of mine. Well, let me just say that dreams do come true, and I'm going to teach you exactly how to make your dreams come true. If you are ready, let us begin. There are sacred laws in our universe that are always running, and they are available and accessible to each and every one of us. These laws, when used properly, can bring abundance into our experience. Whether it is abundant health, abundant wealth, or abundant love you desire, you can have it. In fact, the truth is that you can have it all. That is, if you can believe you can. This documentary is like no other that you have seen. Besides being exposed to the universal laws of our experience, you are going to learn exactly how to create the reality you desire. Most Law of Attraction documentaries and films simply are an introduction to certain concepts, which is great, but they all leave you with information that is simply conceptual. In this documentary, I'm going to teach you exactly how to actually create the reality you desire and how to successfully bring it into your physical human experience. The reason why I can teach you how to successfully do this is because I have actually used the exact same techniques with success in my own life. If you want to get real results, you're going to need to do more than just hope things will get better for you. When the student is ready, the teacher will appear. The reason why I made this documentary is quite simple. I wanted to share my knowledge and to show everyone in the world how to create a happier, healthier, and more abundant life experience. The better it becomes for each of us, the better it will become for all of us. We are all here to help each other through cooperation to achieve the best life possible. The fact is that the more you have, the more there is to share. All of us can have everything that we desire, and it does not take away from anyone else having more in their experience. Most of the human race believes in scarcity, and that the more you have, the less that others have. That is not the truth. The truth is that you have infinite resources at your disposal, and we are here to show you how to tap into the infinite. We are limited not by our abilities, but by our vision. So, what is reality? The greatest secret that I can share with you is that reality is not what you think it is. Reality is best described as your human experience. You are probably wondering what the difference is. Most everyone relates to what they view as reality through what their five senses tell them. If I can touch it, taste it, smell it, see it, or hear it, then it must be reality as that is what your biofeedback mechanisms are sending back to your brain. What is really going on, though, is that you are seeing a reflection of your current thoughts and beliefs appearing as your physical reality. It is very deep stuff to truly comprehend, but the fact is that you are a spiritual being having an experience in physicality. I hope that I didn't lose you with that last statement. What do I mean by that? Great question. Let me explain. Everyone who participates in the human experience is a spiritual being who agreed to come into physicality to experience and achieve their individual soul's purpose. More than likely, you have never heard this information before, so let me explain this to you further. 
We all have a purpose for being here, and it is always about growing and becoming the highest version of ourselves that we can be. The process is evolutionary, and it is about attaining self-mastery of our experience through working with spirit and the universal laws which govern our experience in physicality. Before we go even deeper, let's talk about the rules of the game that we call life. The greatest and foremost of these rules is what are known as pre-life agreements. Pre-life agreements are just that. They are agreements that each of us made as spirits before coming into physicality the greatest of which was that we had to forget that we were actually spiritual beings who chose to be here and have the human experience. The reason we chose to forget that we were truly spiritual beings was so that we could fully experience all of the emotions which make up and enrich our human experience. Without this agreement in place, more than likely, we would have chosen to avoid anything in our human experience which would have caused us grief and pain, such as the death of a loved one. There are other pre-life agreements that we made ahead of time which showed up as events in our lives which seem like insane challenges, but we created these events ahead of time so that we could have the experience of overcoming them, so that we could achieve what we set out as our soul's purpose for this lifetime. An example of this could be of a young entrepreneur having massive success at an early age and then losing all of their material possessions through a bankruptcy, which was an event created ahead of time so that they would have the exciting experience of recreating success for the higher good of all. Everything in our experience including our bodies, thoughts, and feelings, are all simply different arrangements of energy vibrating at different rates. The chair in your office, the stove in your kitchen, the automobile that you drive daily, and the water that you drink are all constructed out of the same thing at the smallest level. The level that I am referring to is way below that of atoms, electrons, and even subatomic particles and waves. At the smallest level, the building blocks of everything are what have been referred to as consciousness units. Probably the best description would be to call it God stuff, as it is the basic building block of all the energies in the universe. These consciousness units are powerful beyond belief, and they communicate through non-local communication to each and every other conscious unit in the universe. Every single consciousness unit knows what every other one single consciousness unit is doing without the need for communication, and they work collectively to create everything that exists in all of our realities. Wallace Waddles referred to this as being a formless substance, which, when acted upon by the right thought, could deliver miracles into our experience with mathematical certainty. This formless substance, which rearranges itself and becomes what is set upon it through our thoughts, beliefs, feelings, and emotions. Waddles also described it as a thinking stuff which permeates our reality. This stuff does not make a judgment about anything. It only responds to the instructions it receives and creates. It is always operating in the background creating as instructions are being impressed upon it by our thoughts, feelings, beliefs, and emotions. This thinking stuff could best be summed up and described as the creation machine of reality. The greatest teachers and mystics of all time have known this to be true, and they have tried to share this truth with the masses. Ask, and it is given. The mind is everything. What you think, you become. Stop acting so small. You are the universe in ecstatic motion. What they have all tried to convey is that you are the absolute creator of your experience. What you are seeing on the outside in your experience is the direct result of everything you have ever thought, felt, or believed to be true. There are universal laws which apply to everyone equally in the world, 
and they are always running perfectly in the background. These universal laws apply equally to everyone on the planet. So it doesn't matter whether you are young or old, where you live, or what you look like. It is also something that will never be revealed to us by science, as it is not meant to be discovered by man. The best way to discuss how the universal law works is to describe how they work in our experience. One thing that you must understand about your life experience is that everything in your experience operates under a set of divine laws, which are always in place. They always work, and they work the same way for everyone in this experience, and they have been here since the beginning. Understanding these laws are in place, and that you can work with them to achieve your desired outcome is nothing short of having the power of the entire universe at your command. These divine laws are in place, and they are always running. They are also impartial, and they will return to you whatever you think and believe of them. Unfortunately, ignorance of these laws does not exclude you from their effects and the resulting reality you experience. Another thing you must know is these divine laws will never contradict you, and that they always say yes to whatever you think into them. They also are under your complete control, and the effects of a lifetime of wrong thinking can be reversed in an instant through effectively focused thought. This is precisely how miracles are created and experienced in people's lives. Even though you may have made agreements before coming into this experience, do not think for a second you are somehow bound by what people call fate. Maybe you set something up beforehand which seems like a massive challenge. That was only because you knew that you could handle it and overcome it. It was meant as an opportunity for you to experience growth. It was not punishment you were trying to force upon yourself. The term free will is better described as free thought, as you are always free to change what and how you think. Using this ability effectively will change your entire human experience, and this power is embedded in all of us. Just remember that you don't need to understand how the machine of creation works. You just must know how to work with it to get our desired results. Since you alone are responsible for your thoughts, only you can change them. Knowing that our personal experience and reality is created by our thoughts, feelings, and beliefs, it is now time for us to take back our power and deliberately create the reality which we desire. This is actually something which you have already been doing your entire life, so don't think for a minute that this is a new and untried concept. You just were never aware of the fact that this was the truth of your experience, and up until now you have been creating reality by default. The only difference this time is that you are going to do it consciously with deliberate intention. We are all creators of our experience, so why not create the life of our dreams instead of settling for what you may be experiencing now? You absolutely can do it, but you are going to have to change your thoughts, beliefs, and actions to have success with the process. Before we get into the dynamics of successful deliberate creation, we really need to talk about something which is holding each one of us back from reaching our full potential, and that is ourselves. What do I mean by that? It is very simple. Our beliefs about ourselves either empower us to greatness, or they keep us in our comfort zone, which is the status quo. By staying in the status quo, there is never any need to feel bad about not achieving something, and you don't make anyone else uncomfortable with the fact that they too are not striving for something bigger and better in their lives. Why would anyone choose to stay in the status quo? The answer is very simple, and it can be summed up in one word, and that word is FEAR. F-E-A-R is really just an acronym for False Evidence Appearing Real. Almost every single reason or excuse why most people do not take action comes down to fear, and 99.99% .99 of fear is simply in your mind, and no place else. As soon as you start thinking about what your life could be like if you left the status quo, 
you are going to be bombarded by all kinds of thoughts which are completely based on fear. So where did all of these thoughts and beliefs come from? In short, they came from your environment, from the day you were born until where you are now today. Let's take a look at the different sources in your environment which have had a direct effect on your belief system about yourself and the world in which you live. Parents are by far the greatest influence on any child, and they have absolutely had an effect upon you, whether it was good or bad. Unfortunately, most parents are only passing down to their children the same fear-based nonsense that they received from their parents, who in turn received it from their parents, and it has been going on for generations. Unfortunately, 95% of what you probably heard while you were growing up was absolute fear-based nonsense, and it was coupled with a total ignorance of the law of attraction. In short, they didn't negatively program you on purpose, they just didn't know any better. Besides your parents, there are other very strong sources of influence that you were exposed to, such as your friends, the schools you attended and the teachers you had, the community that you grew up in, the culture that you associate with and their beliefs, the religious beliefs you have and the beliefs of the associated religion you were exposed to, the beliefs associated with your race consciousness, the beliefs associated with your gender and sexuality, the associated beliefs of your political leaders and your country as a whole, and the news media and what you are exposing yourself to. Let's take a closer look at these forces of influence. What do your friends believe about success? Are they successful themselves? Do they believe the world is their oyster and opportunities are theirs for the taking? Or do they believe that they are doomed to live a life of hardship? Take a very close look at who your friends are and ask yourself if remaining in their orbit is going to heighten or lessen your chances of success. What did you hear from your teachers when you were growing up? Did they tell you that you were a brilliant student? Or did they tell you that you should probably look at attending a trade school because you didn't have what it takes to graduate from college? If you bought into their ridiculous assessment, what kind of effect did that have on your beliefs and what you could or could not accomplish? What kind of community did you grow up in? And what do most of the people who live there believe? Did you grow up in a community that has a poverty mindset? Or did you grow up in a community that had a mindset that believed you could achieve anything through hard work? Did you buy into what everyone else in your community collectively believed? Did you grow up in a very tight-knit culture that has ancient rituals and beliefs about the roles of daughters and sons towards family and society? If so, did you accept those predetermined roles, or did you choose a different path? What was the religious doctrine that you were exposed to? Did you buy into on face value because everyone else did? What role is it playing today in your life? And how is it affecting your beliefs around what you should or should not be doing? Do you believe that your race is an asset to success? Or do you believe that it is a hindrance to your ability to be successful? Is it really true or is it just a belief that most people who look similar to you believe? Do you feel that your opportunities are limited based on what your gender or sexuality is? Is this something that you believe to be true? Do you believe what the political leaders tell you from the bully pulpit as being the absolute truth about reality and opportunity and what you can achieve? How exposed are you and what is your perception regarding what the media is feeding you during the 24-hour news cycle? Do you believe everything you hear, and is it having an effect on how you view your personal reality? All of these outside forces have had an effect on what you presently believe, whether they were obvious influences or not. Besides outside forces, you also have developed a belief system about who you are and what you can accomplish. All of us have different traits, and how we self-identify with ourselves has a big impact on our belief systems. Many people suffer from low self-esteem, and they do not believe that they are successful or that they could ever be successful. Another all-too-common self-sabotaging internal belief 
is to identify yourself as being a victim of whatever you say you are the victim of. It is basically your excuse for why you are not successful or happy. And in the victim world, the victim is never responsible for their outcomes. Identifying what your limiting beliefs are is the first step towards eliminating them from your life experience. Once you have identified them, you can then work to convert them into being empowering beliefs, which inspire you to accomplish greater and greater things. For every limiting belief that you identify that you have, I want you to take a real hard look at where that belief came from, and does it have any truth to it in your life? More than likely, it is just some non-empowering thought which you have been repeating in your mind, which is completely false. Removing limiting beliefs is not difficult once you have identified them for what they are, and that is a lie which you have been telling yourself over time. If you want to achieve massive success, eliminate any and all limiting beliefs which may be holding you back. Your success truly depends on it. Remember, there are no limits when you are working with the Law of Attraction, unless you say there is. Life has no limitations, except the ones you make. The Seven Master Keys for Deliberate Creation Master Key Number One Decide The secret and the beginning of manifesting anything comes down to deciding what you want to experience. That sounds simple and straightforward until you have dug deeper down to answer it. First off, you must decide what you want to be, do, or have in this life experience. The best way to help you answer those big questions is to ask you another question, and that is, if money was not an issue and you could do anything, then what would you do? Once you can answer that question, you are on the right track, and deep down inside, that is your true passion. Now that you have answered the what part of the question, there is another equally important question to answer, and that is why. Once you have your what right, the answer to the why will be deep, and when you drill down to the core, the answer will be love, joy, and excitement. The answer will not be along the lines, I could make a six-figure income. Let me save you from making a huge mistake through sharing some sage wisdom with you, and that is, if you chase the money first, you will always be chasing happiness. If you instead pursue happiness first, the money will show up, and you won't need to chase it. Nothing is wrong with being wealthy, but choose happiness first. All the money in the world will not make a difference in your life if you are not happy and healthy. Another thing which I must share with you is that when you create the intention of what you desire to experience, and you know how good it will feel once you experience it in your life, the next thing you need for success is the ability to believe it could honestly be true for you. One of the greatest secrets to deliberately creating and manifesting comes down to your ability to believe that it will happen. Repeating affirmations and practicing other techniques will have zero success if you honestly do not believe it could happen. I am not saying don't go big. I'm saying just make sure you believe the big can happen. Better yet, believe that the big has already happened and that it is on its way to you this very moment. When you know why you want something, and when you can get into the feeling of what it will be like when it shows up with the belief that it is true and on its way, then you will have completed the key of deciding. Master Key Number 2 Action once you have completed the key of decide, the next step is to master action. Everything in our experience is energy, and taking action sends the message to spirit that you are serious. The quickest way to get from where you are to where you want to be is to get started now. If you want to experience immediate failure with manifesting anything, simply don't take action. Most of the world loves the status quo, so you won't be alone in the collective suffering of living a life without passion. You will be just like everyone else who describes themselves as normal. The first action item I will teach you is what I call my hour of power, 
If you ask me what I thought the greatest key to my success with deliberate creation is, the answer would be taking the action of practicing my visual festation system every single day. The techniques which I practice every single day include reading spiritual motivating material, reading my written affirmations set up as I am statements, working with Jaden Sterling's Wealth and Wisdom Oracle cards, scripting in my journal, reading and reviewing my vision book, practicing creative visualization, getting into the feeling of as if. I have found that the best time to practice my hour of power is early in the morning, as it keeps life from getting in the way of doing it. One of the first action items I highly suggest doing once you decide what it is you are going for and why you want it is to write out what I call your ideal scene. In your ideal scene, I want you to imagine that everything that you are working on has already manifested in your life, and now you are describing in words what your life is like and how incredible it feels. When you have done this correctly, every time you read your ideal scene, it will make you feel awesome as you are getting to the feeling it is absolutely so. Once you have taken the action and developed your ideal scene, you are ready to move on to the next key of deliberate creation. Master key number three, focus. The ability to consciously control your thoughts and remain focused on that which you desire is the next key you must master. There is incredible power in focused thought. The more focused your thought becomes, the sooner you will manifest anything that you are working on. Having the ability to maintain your focus on what you desire when it seems on the surface that the entire world is crashing around you is no simple feat. Most people have spent their entire lives worrying about things and then having the experience of what they fear showing up in their reality. It is the same principle in action, and it is always working. The craziest thing, though, is that most of the world has no problem believing in things getting worse for them, but at the same token cannot believe that changing what they think and focus on will bring about a different and better reality. One of the best quotes which I ever heard was that worrying is like praying for what you don't want to have happen. When you are in a state of worry, fear, or worse yet, crisis, it is almost as if your mind has hijacked your being, and it is causing you to suffer both mentally and physically. Trust me, I have been there myself, and I have worked with clients when they are experiencing those states. It is not a place where you want to spend any time in. And the trick to slaying those monsters is to make the firm decision that your mind works for you and takes your commands, and not the other way around. Be conscious of every thought running through your head, and ask yourself whether that thought is empowering you to achieve that which you desire, or is it a fear-based negative thought which is attempting to hold you back. When you first start doing this, it will almost seem like a non-stop job, as you probably had no idea how many negative thoughts which you have been thinking day to day for a number of years. The good news is that it gets easier and easier to do, as the more you focus on what you desire, the less space there is for negative thoughts to exist. Another important secret of success is never to focus on outside appearances as being something permanent. An example of this could be that you are let go from a job which you deep down hated but were too afraid to quit. Instead of focusing on fear about finding a new job, you instead focus on the fact that it happened for you, and miraculously a few days later you land a new position which pays more, and that you love it. Sometimes the greatest blessings that ever happen for us come in disguised as negative events, your role is to know and stay focused on the fact that no matter what shows up, that it is happening for you. Through practicing a controlled focus on the events happening for you, you will neutralize the effect of any negative thoughts from coming in. Through maintaining your ability to focus your thoughts on that which you desire, you are actually drawing what you desire into your reality and experience. The greater your ability to focus on that which you desire, 
the sooner it will show up in your experience. To take it one step further, you know you have this mastered when people around you think that you must be delusional. As who in their right mind could believe it is all working out for them when it looks on the surface to be anything but? When you can do this and control your mind, you have mastered this key and success is yours. Master Key Number 4 Faith Mastering the key of faith is a critically important piece towards mastering deliberate creation. When I refer to faith, I am not referring to hope. Hope, to me, is a very weak word. It is more like, I hope it works, which to me has essentially zero faith. Now let's contrast that with, I know it works. When your faith rises up to the level of knowing, that is the place where you must be operating from. Knowing is beyond believing. In fact, you don't even need to think about it as it simply becomes who you are and a part of your everyday life. Having faith at the level of true knowing will come to you over time if you keep working with spirit. One of the greatest things about mastering the key of faith is that you stay out the hows. When I refer to the hows, I am referring to having all kinds of thoughts and questions about how your miracle will come about. The hows are the domain of spirit. So stay out of it and let spirit handle the synchronicities that will take place for you to experience that which you have been working on. Until you reach the level of faith which is the knowing, stay focused and trust that the process is working for you, and hold on to this trust as the truth, and ye shall have whatsoever ye saith. Master Key Number 5 Consistency Everyone says that they want change, but how many do you think will show up every day and do the work necessary to facilitate change? The truth is, there are very few. Consistency, out of all the keys, is the easiest to master. It requires no special equipment, and you need not fly to Nepal either. So why does it seem like mastering consistency is the physical equivalent to climbing Mount Everest? One of the greatest secrets to success with manifesting is to show up every single day and practice my visual festation system techniques, which I call my hour of power. A great analogy for being consistent is to imagine that you are a fisherman on a deep sea charter, and suddenly you have a giant marlin on your line. The fish looks so big that it might be one for the record books. You know that if you stop turning your reel, you will never get the fish back to the boat. The marlin is a metaphor for your miracle and you need to keep turning the reel every day until it shows up in your experience. When you can do this, you have mastered the key of consistency. Master Key Number 6 Awareness The next key to achieving that which you desire is through awareness. The awareness that I am referring to is again probably something you have never heard before. When I say awareness, I am referring to being consciously aware of communication constantly taking place with spirit to help you in your experience. I'm sure you have had the examples in your life where your intuition has kicked in and you get a feeling or a knowing about something. You can't quite put your finger on it, but something is pointing you in a certain direction or holding you back from doing something. Some people simply describe this feeling as a hunch. Everyone has experienced this in their life numerous times. So it seems normal and universal, and it is. This is where our conversation about awareness begins. The communication you receive in a hunch is actually communication coming to you from spirit. What you may not know is that we each can greatly enhance the clarity and the frequency of this type of communication. Through consciously developing your connection to spirit, you can open up the lines of communication to where you can tap into this channel of communication whenever needed. Spirit always knows the shortest and best path for you to take, and Spirit wants the best for you. Spirit is always there and waiting for you to ask for assistance. Imagine there is a machine that has been sitting in your basement for as long as you can remember. You aren't sure how to use it as you saw no instructions for it, but you were told from a very young age to never get rid of it, as it could one day save your life. That machine is your mind and its ability to communicate with spirit. 
and you have only to hit the start button and the machine works. Always listen to your gut feelings, as they are important communications from spirit. Another straightforward communication from spirit is when you are thinking about something, and suddenly your body has the experience of goose flesh, and the hairs on your arms and legs will stand straight up, like you are mildly hit with electrical current. Always trust that information as being a confirmation that it is the right choice. Another example of how communication takes place is through telepathy. With telepathy, it is nonverbal communication that comes to your mind, like a one-way conversation. Sometimes we all refer to it as the little voice in our head that is telling us something. Trust what it is telling you. Another form of communication is intuitive knowing. For me, the best way to describe it is with another analogy. Imagine for a moment you suddenly knew everything there was about quantum physics, and you never went to a university or took any courses on the subject. You simply have the information instantaneously, and you know it to be true. Through increasing your awareness and trusting the information that comes in, the sooner you will manifest that which you desire. Master Key Number 7. Gratitude. Gratitude is the key to an exceptional life. There is something universal about gratitude. It works wonders with any parts of your life. It is powerful, and it is the stuff miracles are made from. Having gratitude from wherever you are right now is your starting point. Too many people have this attitude they will give thanks once things in their life get better, which is a backward and useless approach. Not having gratitude now is probably the surest way to stay stuck in the place you are at. The quickest way in the world to bring good things into your life is to have gratitude now, not later. As soon as you give thanks for all that you have in your life, your vibration changes and you feel better. The better you feel, the greater your positive vibration. Resonating the vibration of gratitude is the God code for bringing in abundance. As soon as you say thank you to spirit, Spirit responds. You feel good and Spirit feels good. Spirit sends you more blessings, which makes you feel better, which makes Spirit feel better, and the cycle will continue as long as you stay in that vibrational path. There is no limit on how amazing your life can be. I need to warn you about something, and that is the quickest way for you to have a negative reversal of good fortune is to stop having gratitude to Spirit. How often have you heard about someone famous who once had everything and now has nothing? If you looked into their lives, you would see a pattern whereby they had gratitude on the way up, lost gratitude at the top and thought it was all about them, and on the way down to destruction, they blame everyone but themselves. If you don't like your job, be grateful that you have one while you actively search for the right job. Being in that vibration will attract in the right position for you. Having gratitude now for it being on its way to you is how you work with spirit to make it happen. The way to make sure that it doesn't happen is to sit on your butt and complain about your present job. I've got some bad news for you, and that is that it will only get worse until you wake up and give thanks. I've heard people say that what you thank about, you bring about. Although that is a short saying, it is jam-packed with truth. When your life becomes a non-stop prayer of thank you, your life will be nothing short of magical. The game of life is a game of boomerangs. Our thoughts, deeds, and words return to us sooner or later with astounding accuracy. The Visual Festation System Now that we have covered the seven master keys for success with deliberate creation, it is now time to share with each of you the Visual Festation System and the exact techniques that I use daily to achieve real-world success with these principles. Vision Boards The first technique that we are going to discuss is the use of vision boards and vision books. Vision boards are essentially a visual representation of that which you desire to manifest into your experience. Besides being a constant reminder of what you are working toward achieving, they are also excellent tools for you to use to assist you with your creative visualization exercises. The first thing you need to do is to create the list of goals for which you have a passion for. Once you have done this, the next step is to gather pictures of what the attainment of these goals looks like. As an example, 
Let's say your goal is to take your family on a vacation to Disney World. What you could do then is to get some marketing brochures from Disney, which are filled with photos of families having a great time at the park, and cut out the pictures of the families having fun. More than one picture is preferable, as it will give you more material to work with. Once you have these photos, you can fasten them to either a book or board or both. Take your time doing this and make sure you find the best pictures you can. Remember, this is your life we are talking about, and OK is not going to cut it. So, make sure you find pictures that you can look at and generate the feeling of truly having what the picture represents to you. Where faith and belief are such a crucial part of the manifestation process, find some spiritual verses that resonate with you and add them in as well. Inside your vision book or in your journal, you should have a list of your written goals, which must be in the present tense. One really good way to do this is to write them as affirmations or as I am statements. Let's assume that you are single and your goal is to be in a loving relationship. You could write your goal out as I am so happy to be in a loving relationship. The important thing to stress again is that the statement must give you the ability to have the feeling that it is true. When you are done, your vision book should look like a representation of the life of your dreams. As the pictures in your book become your actual reality, and they will, move those pages to the back of your book. That way, when you see them in the future, it will thoroughly reinforce the fact that you are a co-creator and that you have the power to manifest things into your reality. Now that you have created your vision book, it is time to use it. The vision book is really a tool for you to use to create the feeling of already having the life of your dreams. At this stage, you have already defined what it is that you want to have in your life. You know why you want it, and you have true passion for it showing up in your life. Having pictures of what it looks like now is very powerful. I cannot explain to you exactly how it works. All I can tell you is that when you combine this with creative visualization, you are going to be blown away by the results. Creative Visualization The process of creative visualization is to actively use your imagination to create the movie in your mind of what your dream life looks and truly feels like. When done effectively, you will be able to create a visualization which will seem as real to you as the dreams you experience when you sleep. One of the things you must be able to master to have really good visualizations is the ability to quiet your mind through meditation. To begin, you need to be able to relax, turn off your outside thoughts, and bring your brain waves down to a state known as alpha. At alpha, you are completely relaxed, but you are still awake. Alpha can best be described as the state which you are in just before you fall asleep. At that level, you are very relaxed, but you can still control your thoughts. One technique you can use to get into Alpha is to sit in a comfortable chair, close your eyes and relax, and then count backwards from 15 to 1, and relaxing more and more as you count down, and finally arriving at 1, and being an Alpha and being completely relaxed. Once you are at Alpha, you can begin your visualization process. With your eyes closed, relax and use your imagination to step into your ideal scene where all of your goals have manifested. When you are in your ideal scene, you are not visualizing about how it is to come about. Instead, you are enjoying being in the end result. One of the most important things you must have when visualizing is the ability to generate the feeling of joy and love that it has come true and to bask in that good feeling. We live in a feeling universe, and these good feelings you experience are going to attract more experiences for you to have good feelings about. Eventually, these good feelings will be accompanied by the actual manifestation of the end result into your reality that you are now visualizing. Before you come out of your visualization, imagine the ideal scene now surrounded by a pink bubble, and get into a feeling of total joy and gratitude to the universe for bringing this to you. 
The next thing to do is to see the pink bubble float higher and higher, getting smaller and smaller as it rises to the heavens and eventually disappears. Now slowly open your eyes and realize that you have done your part, and the universe will bring it to you. Know and feel this to be true without any doubt. In the pink bubble technique just described above, the color pink is associated with love, which is the most powerful force in the universe. The bubble floating to the heavens represents detachment from the outcome, whereby you are not worried about it coming true, because you know that it is true. When we are practicing the techniques, we are truly operating as co-creators with the universe and operating in the field of infinite possibilities where anything and everything can be created. There is going to be a time delay between practicing your visualization exercises and the time when the things you want to show up in your reality actually arrive. The most important thing you need to do is to believe with faith that it is done and on its way to you, and that it is only a matter of time before it shows up. We all possess more power and greater possibilities than we realize, and visualizing is one of the greatest of these powers. Scripting Scripting, which is sometimes referred to as journaling, is a great technique to practice. There is something very powerful about writing words down on paper. It is especially powerful when you are writing them down while simultaneously having a feeling of gratitude. It only takes a few minutes, and you can generate some amazing feelings of truly having it now. It is important that you find a quiet place to write without distractions. From there, break out your paper and pencil and start writing about the miracles that you want to have materialize in your life as already being done, along with the associated feelings of joy and gratitude that they are your current reality. You should be able to generate the same level of feelings when you are scripting as you do when you are having a good day visualizing. Don't worry about your penmanship or spelling when you are doing this exercise. Always be writing in the present tense, as though it has already happened. Let's say one of your goals is to have a cabin in the mountains. Here's how I might write about it. Wow! I cannot believe how much I love spending time at our new cabin next to the lake. I love meditating next to the crystal clear, pristine waters every morning. I feel so at peace here. The kids are having such a great time swimming that I can barely get them to come out of the water to eat. The sunsets over the lake are absolutely beautiful, and I love the cool evenings here. Lord, I cannot thank you enough for my beautiful cabin. I love being here so much that I never want to leave. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you have done this exercise correctly, when you are done writing, you should really be basking in a feeling of joy and gratitude. Another method of scripting is to imagine that you are writing a letter to a very close friend or loved one, and you are telling them all about the miracles that have happened to you. The more detailed you can be about your feelings and the experience, the better. You can use scripting to improve any area of your life that you wish to change. Affirmations Affirmations are powerful statements that you repeatedly say aloud back to yourself. The idea behind them is to put your subconscious mind to work on bringing these affirmations into your reality. The affirmations are always written or said in the present tense, and they are always positive. Your subconscious mind does not recognize the words no and not, so do not use them when you create your affirmations. Let's say one of your goals is to lose 50 pounds and to get back down to your ideal fit body weight of 130 pounds. Rather than creating an affirmation that says, I am no longer fat, a better way would be the following affirmation. I feel great maintaining my perfect weight of 130 pounds. Some people have had great experiences with saying their affirmations while staring at themselves in the mirror. One of the best methods to practice affirmations is to create one for each of your goals, and then to repeat them when you first rise, and again just before sleep. Then, visualize and see them as all being true in your mind before drifting off to sleep. 
you will be a failure until you impress the subconscious with the conviction you are a success. This is done by making an affirmation which clicks. As if. Think, speak, and act as if is a technique whereby you get into the mindset and feeling of being, having, and doing. What you are doing is creating a state of mind in which you feel as if you have already achieved your goals, and you create these feelings ahead of the actual event. You also combine this with action, and do the things you will do when your dream life manifests, as well as acquiring the knowledge that you will need to be ready when your goals show up. One of the things you may need to get over is the concept of make-believe as something only children play. You live in a world that is make-believe, and never forget it. Wherever you are in life right now is a result of what you have believed and made. Now that you have been told this, it is time for you to use this knowledge to your advantage. Think of this as being similar to your visualizations, except that now you are doing them and you are fully conscious. Whatever it is that you want, make sure that you do your homework to prepare yourself. An example of this could be that you want a new red convertible Ford Mustang. If that is one of your goals, go down to the dealership and test drive the exact model you desire. Now you know exactly what it feels like to actually be in that car, and acting as if will now be much more detailed and powerful. Then, practice the feeling of as if for having it now, and feel real gratitude, for it is just a matter of time before it manifests into your reality. The man who succeeds must always in mind or imagination live, move, think, and act as if he had gained that success, or he will never gain it. Miracles I have an absolutely amazing story of a miracle that took place around ten years ago. The story about this particular miracle was shared with me firsthand by the man who experienced it. The man was in his mid-thirties when he was diagnosed as having an advanced level of a terminal disease, which, according to his doctors, was incurable. Believing what the medical professionals were telling him, he took their advice and admitted himself into a hospice facility to live out his final days. After laying in his bed at the facility for around two weeks waiting to die, a powerful message came in through a voice that was so loud that he couldn't believe everyone in the building didn't hear it. It came through as a simple question. Have you had enough of this suffering yet? There was no one else in the room except for him, so he knew this was coming straight from spirit. He answered, yes, I am done with this. In that moment, a rush of energy went through his body that he said was indescribable and truly beyond words. And in that very moment, he knew that he was completely healed and he could feel it throughout his entire being. He then got out of bed and told the staff that he was now all well and that he wanted to go home. The staff looked at him like he was crazy and told him to get back in bed as he was getting close to transitioning. He was adamant and demanded that they release him at once. They said that they would bring the doctors in to run some more tests and show him that he was still very sick and about to die. Well, the doctors came in and ran numerous tests, and then they ran even more tests as they could not believe the results that they were getting. How was it possible that this man was, in their opinion, hours away from certain death, and now they could not even find a trace of anything that said that he had ever even been sick. When they told the man that all of the tests were negative for the disease, he said, That is what I have been telling you for the past week. I told you I was healed. He was then released from hospice, and he shared this remarkable story with me around two years after his miracle. All disease originates in the mind. Nothing appears on the body unless there is a mental pattern corresponding to it. The absolute truth is that you are the self-fulfilling prophecy of your life experience. You truly can have it all, and the life of your dreams is waiting on you. The moment to begin is now. Godspeed to you. What we think we become.